Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's have a look at a major mask update in Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, now creating masks is something a lot of people do in Premiere Pro. And the masking tools before this had some major limitations. First of all, they would constantly rotate um, if you moved the mask, the pen tool near a point, but not too far away. And it happened all the time and you had to undo and, and keep it. So they've changed that. No more scaling or rotating while you're drawing the mask. And you can now draw very close to another point. Before you, if you were anywhere near another point, it would select the point or again, rotate. So that's been changed. You can also zoom closer, 800 to 1600%. So it is way better than it used to be. Uh, it's still far from as far from being as good as After Effects. Photoshop or Illustrator pen tools are just far superior, but at least they're trying. Now, what would you use a mask for? Isolating stuff. And this is the number one thing I see in requests. People ask, how do you do that effect? And that effect almost always includes a mask or an isolation or a key or something. And making a mask is something you do in Premiere Pro. Here's an example. Let me just show you this. In this example, I have uh, the same clip on video track two and one. And in video track two, I've got a blur. So it, it looks a little bit like a shallow depth of field. And if you do that to the whole clip, well, it blurs the subject. So on the top one, I have a mask that I drew around the outside of her. And it, it um, basically it cuts her out. So she's cut out. So when you put her over the blurred background, it looks like a little depth of field. Now I did this with one frame. There's no way I would start using the masking tools in Premiere Pro to do a frame by frame. Because this, if this was a three minute song, this is like two, three days work. It's, you wouldn't do it here. You wouldn't. Where would you do it? After Effects, or even better, Mocha is the place to do it. I'll put a link to what Mocha is. There's a free version of Mocha that comes in After Effects and, it, and it's much better. So here is the motorcycle file that I'm about to do in the old version. And I'm gonna to try to draw around here, but I'm gonna to go to 400%, which is the maximum amount you can draw a mask. And although this looks pretty close, when you're in tight areas like here, it's impossible to control the old mask. So I recorded this next section with the old version about a month or two ago as I was waiting for the new version to come out. So we'll play that back now and hopefully um, the audio is okay. So let's, let's go to the old version first. All right, so I'm using the Essentials workspace and I'm going to add a mask for opacity. Twirl that down and click on the pen tool. And when I click on the pen tool, it's created a mask but hasn't made any points. Of course, you can zoom in, which I'd have to do here, but the problem is you have gotta do this and then zoom around. If I double click on the name of that panel, it's gonna open it up into a large screen. It's going to make recording a mask easier. So I'll start here at the top, drag, over here, drag, come down to the bottom, and then drag, oh, see how it, it's, it's rotating, which I don't want to do. So eventually it draws, but a lot of times it, oh, a lot of times it's going to accidentally. So sometimes I've had to draw way out here and then move and I can't even do that. And then move the actual mask over there. These were the problems in the previous version. You see, you're trying to draw, you can't just, I can't zoom in any more than 400% and it is constantly making that 
rotate. So drawing a mask has been a complete failure. All right, so you can see within just a few seconds, the mask is doing things I don't want it to do over and over and over again, which just breaks your train of thought and makes it very difficult to, to draw anything. Uh, so it'll twirl down opacity and I'll click here on the uh, draw free draw beige. And when I click on it, I've created a mask with no points on it. This is the main area people get screwed up with is uh, they constantly go back and click on the pen tool because that's what you would do in Photoshop, in After Effects, anywhere. You go get the pen tool to do more pen tool stuff. Um, you don't do that in, in Premiere Pro. You actually click on the mask name to get the, the pen tool and start working. Okay, so that's the first step. We're using opacity, but we can create a mask for anything. All right, next, let's zoom in. 800% and see if that's going to be enough. So I have my mask started. I'm going to hit the tilde key and there is no uh, hand tool that's easy to get to, uh, but Photoshop, all, all the rest of the Adobe applications, the space bar is a, if you press and hold the space bar, it temporarily gives you the, the hand tool to pan around. Can't do that in Premiere Pro. You can tap the H key to get the hand tool, move around and grab the P key back and forth, but I'm not gonna do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is click and draw up in the top. I'm gonna come down here and draw another handle. Maybe move that one down and I'll click in here. Maybe move this one out a bit. And you can see, watch how close I can get to this and draw. Now that right there should alert you to that this is different. The previous version, clicking that close, the mask would have thought I wanted to edit the point and not draw a new one, but duh, I wanted to draw a new one. To me, this isn't zoomed in enough. I need it even more. So I'm gonna try 1600%. All right, zoom over here. Look at that, I could put a point right there. So I'm gonna just keep drawing these. Some I click and some I click and drag, depending on how I want to uh, uh, draw that point. Now it's, like I said, it's not perfect. It's still not what you'd expect for something like, um, And the other thing you can't do here is I can't click and then drag after the fact. So let me delete that one. I'm gonna undo, click and drag. And what you can't do is you can't add a modifier key to turn the corner after the fact while you're drawing it. You can turn the corner um, and uh, I can't even turn this corner here with a modifier key, can I? There I go. So I can after I've drawn it. I'm holding the Alt key on Windows, the uh, Option key on Mac. So you can see it's doing a much better job than the old one. I can get into these tight areas. Now, the, the, the one thing you'll notice is that the there is a little bit of a lag when you draw, if I click and put, see I'm moving my mouse and it, it hasn't pulled the handles out until I get to there. Okay, that's really weird. That's the way it's always been. Um, that's just the way the pen tool works here. Of course, in all the other Adobe applications, if you click and you move like like, like two pixels, pew, handles pop up. And of course, you can easily convert those handles in other applications, not so much here. But at least I get better drawing tools than I had before. So the masking tools, uh, yeah, I would make a mess of this. 
Anyway, I think you get the idea. Now, here's one thing. So, you can zoom in now to 1600%. As you can see down here, zoom in to 1600%. You can draw the mask easily, uh, again, without um, without issues of it. If, at no point did this rotate without me wanting it to rotate. So they've taken care of all of that. All of that is great. So thank you very, very much, Adobe, for giving me more of this, uh, more control. But there's one thing that's a, a big problem. I don't know if you noticed this when I was scrolling around. Watch this. Notice how it doesn't move with the mask. So it, it floats around and then tries to catch up with itself. So you'll see I'm now off that area there. I'm not, it's just the zoom value. See, it's moving around. That's the way it works. So if you want to make your masks zoomed into 1600%, that's expected behavior. That's what it's doing. You want to know why I think it's doing that? Here's what I think. After Effects is a program created for high quality compositing, absolute accuracy. And to do that, it, it's, it's not a performance application. After Effects is about accuracy. So all of the math is calculated not by a pixel, but by a sub pixel level. That means they, they divide pixels into, into smaller parts just to get the absolute most best quality compositing with masks and layers and blends and effects. Premiere Pro is a video editing application. It's made for performance, full screen video performance, easy playback, hitting it, letting go, simple masks, 400% uh, zoom with a simple mask in a simple area, dark in this area, dark in that. But it's not meant for visual effects editing like we're doing now. And that's that's the, I see this on Reddit all the time. Somebody will, will be in the Premiere Pro forum and they'll post an example of a visual effect that usually requires rotoscoping, like a lot of very detailed rotoscoping, tracking and visual effects. And they say, "How? Do, what's the button in Premiere Pro to make me do this? Where's the, well, that's called go get a job as a rotoscoper and spend years yelling at the computer and then learn that craft till you finally can do that stuff at that level. It's not a freaking button in, in Premiere Pro. So, don't expect Premiere Pro just with these two little things, two or three little things, zooming in with, with better accuracy to give you what you have in After Effects or Mocha. It won't. And that panning around, that's just what it does. Yes, Adobe gave us what we wanted, but for them to give us what, what we get in, in something like uh, um, After Effects or Nuke or something like that, they would have to change the engine in Premiere Pro. Um, and it, it, they would have to optimize it too. And that would take a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of smart people and money, which we don't get the option for it. So this is what we get now. I mean, it's, it's much better than before. We get a level of accuracy. It was never meant for visual effects. I don't know if we'll ever get there for visual effects uh, for these kinds of things. And you can't use the tracking thing here to track around him and, and follow him around. It ain't gonna happen, it ain't. That's not what that's for. That tracker has problems with, with a, a license plate and a rectangle for crying out loud. So I, I don't wanna poo poo this. I don't wanna really play it down, but I want to let you know that if you're starting to explore these things and all of a sudden you were happy like me and you zoomed into 16% and you saw that shift and then you got let down, well, that's what we got. At least we can, we can do what we can do and thanks Adobe for trying. Hey, if you're new to video revealed and you found this informative and you don't mind me ranting about these things because there's a lesson there all the time, uh, then uh, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us more, you can do that on videoreveal.com slash shop. Donate once, donate monthly uh, like our wonderful donors do. Thank you very much. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to give you the real answers to what you can and can't expect in an application.